All right. Has anyone ever heard of sex trafficking? Um, has anyone ever saw movies or TV shows that had sex trafficking in it or talked about it in any way? Well, 600,000 to 800,000 women, children, and men are bought and sold across um, are bought and sold across international borders every year. Are exploited for forced labor and commercial sex. We live in a world where some sick people enjoy kidnapping and selling them for money and used for sex, or even worse. We catch a glimpse into the sex and trafficking world when it's portrayed in movies or TV shows, but never fully understand how dangerous it really is. Tonight I will talk about, first, how sex trafficking is done during big events, second, kids who are homeless or runaways, LGBTQ, African American, or Latino are more vulnerable to child sex trafficking, and finally, women can be sex, traf sex traffickers too, not only men. So usually sex trafficking is done during big events or even in unexpected places, but everyone believes that the Super Bowl is the biggest single driver to, of sex trafficking in the U.S. Researchers from Carnegie Mellon University did a study of the online ads directed towards sex trafficking. There has been more than 32 million online personal ads published around the time of 33 major public events in the U.S. and Canada since 2011. Uh, researchers decided to determine percentage of ads linked to sex trafficking, but while there was great increase in the number of ads directed towards the Super Bowl, um, other events such as the, it's like Memorial Day, motorcycle rally in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and there was various industry <laughs> conferences that had the bigger impact than the Super Bowl. The resources devoted to the problem with the prostitution was misdirected, but it was definitely possible that law enforcement and first responders who were overcommitted to the Super Bowl was um, missing out on the occurrences or large-scale activity of sex trafficking other than the Super Bowl. Um, traffickers and pimps use online classified services like Backpage.com to advertise sexual services for their victims. And um, these ads are nothing more to like some people than just escorts trying to offer their services, but to law enforcement, keywords like uh, young or no pimps um, are obviously indicators that they are victims of sex trafficking. Okay. Also a big go-to for traffickers is the, der the Kentucky Derby, which draws in a lot of people with a lot of money, so traffickers know how to spot people or like spot events that bring in uh, like enough money to have people do services I guess. <laughs> also the traffickers who's got the money knows who's got the money and where they are going to be. So we also have unexpected areas of sex trafficking. There um, so there's like some posts going around Facebook, I don't know if anyone has noticed, of, of weird items being placed on the windshields of women's cars whenever they're like by themselves, I guess. So they wait until they're all alone and they put a, well, I'll go to the story. So there was this girl who was, um, she just got off work and she was going to her car and noticed that there was a blue flannel shirt that was on her windshield, and she noticed it was kind of weird. Um, and whenever she got in her car, she like she didn't touch it or anything. She saw two cars, and one was running, and she knew that um, it was kind of an like, uneasy situation, and she was getting scared, so she drove away without touching at all, because if you go in and touch it, there's a good chance of you being an easy target for them to come at you, I guess. <coughs> and um, so she went to a safe place where she knew she could be able to get it out, like to get out of her car and to take it off. And these situations are exactly how um, human trafficking and abductions take place. And this leads me into um, how some unexpected pl uh, places but easy targets are tourists and different countries. They don't know the language or what, like what's there to, um, or doesn't know where like stuff is. So they, they rely on other people who live there, or maybe even strangers, to direct them towards the stuff that they need to do. And yeah, so has anyone seen the movie Taken? Yes. 
Okay. So if anyone doesn't know what it is, it's basically about um, a retired CIA agent whose daughter is traveling around Europe to follow like a band for tour, and like she's with one of her friends, and his daughter was abducted and forced to into a trafficking ring, and so she went to go call her dad basically, and she noticed that her friend was being abducted by men that she didn't know. Well, she did know. Um, because someone approached her before, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to get really into it, but so basically in like kidnapping type of situations, they have like 96 hours to find, um, to find someone before they're like gone for good, so he had to kind of be fast with it and he was going to find his daughter and realized that she had been she and, and her friend had been taken into a Albani uh, Albanian sex trafficking ring, and they had to like race against time, I guess, to try to find them. So yeah. So we're gonna talk about something different. Okay, so racial discrimination. Um, this goes towards my second. My second reason about kids who are homeless or runaways, African American, Latino, are more vulnerable to child sex <coughs> trafficking. And the demography of domestic sex trafficking is very different from the racial makeup of the US. In a report by the offices, Office of Victims um, of Crime, of the confirmed sex trafficking victims, 40.4% of victims were African American. This is almost four times higher and the percentage of African Americans living in the U.S. Women and girls who are African American or white or Caucasian are more likely to become victims of sex trafficking than any other ethnic group in the U.S. Some say the demand for um, one race is higher than the other. Also, many traffickers are also savvy businessmen who just want the people that are more marketable. So, yeah, they try to like look for those people. And some traffickers who were interviewed believed that trafficking white women would make them more money, but trafficking black women would land them less jail time if caught. And this goes into what I talk about child sex trafficking. So it's kind of a hard subject to talk about because children are involved, but it's actually happening in the real world. So there is 300,000 children are prostituted each year in the United States, and they're all, like all victims of child sex trafficking. And two million children are victims of child sex trafficking each year across the globe. So the number is staggering, yet the numbers are really true. And the society as a whole tend to look away. That's just how we are. Even you look away, even me. And um, so the average age of a child being trafficked trafficked at only 12 years old, and approximately one of every seven children is sexually contacted or solicited by a predator while online. So these predators single out um, these children in an attempt to lure them in. They talk about, so usually that's how, uh, yeah, that's how they get to the, like children online. And usually um, with prostitution, directed that that's kind of towards child, child sex trafficking. Um, usually people that go into prostitution are more likely to have been abused. And usually if it's abuse in family, in their home life, they tend to run away and that goes towards, um, and they try to, it, so that's like rearrange my words. Okay, so they go into prostitution just because they had nowhere to go since they ran away. And oh, and they try to make ends meet just because they're not at home. And so how like pimp, pimps, I guess, or traffickers, how they attract children is by group homes and they try to show them there's a sense of belonging and a place where they will be loved and they shower them with gifts and like presents and all that but all while grooming them for being in a like in prostitution so next 
I have uh, this organization that helps defend uh, children from sexual abuse. This is called THORN. So THORN is the dedication of more than 350 aspiring volunteers and members of the tech community. They have two very famous celebrities who are both co-founders, um, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. And THORN builds powerful products, leads new programs, maintain essential resources, and develop awareness campaigns. So their first product that they ever created was the thing called Spotlight, and Spotlight was designed based on the insights from their first survivor survey, and a survivor survey is research from the survivors who actually went through sex trafficking. And so Spotlight accelerates victim identification and helps law enforcement make the best use of the critical time that they have to find the children, the, the children that are victims. And since 2016, Spotlight has helped identify an average of eight kids per day, reduce critical search time by 65%, and find a total of 5,791 victimized kids. And they also have a partnership with programs like Project Vic. And Project Vic, it works to uh, create a central unit of identified sexual abuse images. And they, it reduces the amount of time it takes law enforcement to, uh, to analyze these content and allows them to quickly eliminate around 85% of content and focus on the other 15% that isn't already classified, or not yet classified. And they also have another um, program that they develop is a text short code for national human trafficking hotline number called Be Free. And this Be Free is basically a texting app if you're in danger. Um, you can't obviously call like if you're in danger, but kids could text in, in danger if they have, yeah. Okay, so, but Be Free aims to give kids a lifeline on their phone and create an outlet for those who might see or be in suspicious behaviors. So this leads me into how, how you can avoid sex trafficking. Oh, never mind. That's not it. Okay, we have sexism. So this could be this can go with uh, women can be sex traffickers too, and not only men. Usually, with the sexism of it, people tend to think that men are the only the ones that go out and take people, and women have nothing to do with it. But it turns out women can take people, obviously, and children are like more likely to trust a woman more than a man and they're more vulnerable towards women because they were obviously raised by a woman that they gave birth to, you know? And that leads me into, uh, so, speaking of the woman, like a woman being a kidnapper or a abductor, I've heard of, I don't know if anyone else has heard of it, there was a potential sex trafficking ring in Richmond, Kentucky where um, there has been two or three incidents with attempted sex trafficking. There was two over in Grand Campus, and there was one over in the Richmond Walmart, and there was also one that was, a woman came into the EKU library and she was asking for uh, gas money from the students, and people were really weirded out, so, they like blasted her whole um, her whole picture across Facebook and social media and stuff and stuff like that. So that leads me into how to avoid sex trafficking or how to like avoid be becoming a victim. So the human trafficking industry is a thirty-two billion dollar a year industry, and the predators don't view girls slash women as people rather than ATMs, and all that concerns them as the money they can make. So, but you don't need to assume 24-7 that, um, that someone's out to get you because you will become paranoid and you'll be kind of captive, cap in captivity of like what you think all the time. And so, yeah, being alert is incredibly important, but usually people tend to have cell phones these days and they're more paying attention to what they're, what's on their phone than the people surrounding you. 
And so that can make you an easy target of any crime, but especially like a trafficker. So the first step of like how to avoid it is draw attention to yourself if you're ever in like a situation. Talking loudly or anything to cause others to look at you and drawing attention to yourself could draw attention to the potential predator that you may have and they could leave the scene. And number two is determine all possible exits. Wherever you're in, um, make sure to know where all your exits are so if, you, if you're in a situation that you need to run, that you're not um, coming up to a dead end. And <coughs> the third is to use your cell phone in your favor. So take a pic of the potential predator, uh, send to anyone, or you could actually use the Be Free, which is the national hotline trafficking, national human trafficking hotline number. Um, but be sure to text your name, the place that you're at, the address, <coughs> and so that way if you are taken, then the authorities have a lead. And the fourth one is call 911 and describe the individual. That's pretty like self-explanatory, but you call 911, describe the individual that you think is could be following you and is making you uneasy, and you would wait for an officer to get there to help lead you back to your car if you ever need it. And number five is to also make sure that the potential perpetrator is never behind you. So whenever you think that someone is trying to follow you or case you, I guess, you will always keep tabs on their location and at all times to ensure that he or she couldn't like, grab from behind with, with a weapon and try to force you out. And I know you cannot plan every, like, like every situation from like what, what you could do, but talking about it more could, um, could help you remain alert at all times help you keep uh, to keep yourself calm and focused if any like any situation had happened. So in conclusion, I've explained how sex trafficking is done in big events or unexpected places, how kids who are homeless or runaway, LGBTQ, um, African American or Latino are more vulnerable to child sex trafficking and also women who can be sex traffickers. Women can be sex traffickers too, not only men. Um, I hope these tips and strategies could help you avoid sex trafficking or try to make you more aware of what's going on in your surroundings. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. You might have said this, but what are ways to identify a sex trafficker exactly? Like, if, if they approach you, is there something specific that they've been saying? Is it um, maybe body language or?